Hey guys, Sam from West Meadow Rabbits here, and I want to address something that I get comments on all the time. Sometimes they're civil, sometimes they're less civil. But, nonetheless, I often get a really strong reaction from a lot of people about whether or not it is cruel to be keeping meat rabbits on top of wire in wire cages like I have right here. Now, the internet has done a lot of amazing things. It's increased a lot of transparency, both in farming and many other areas of uh, the world. And part of the problem today is that a smaller and smaller percentage of people are actually involved in food production in America. I think it's less than like 1.5% of Americans are involved in the agricultural industry. And most Americans today live in urban areas. What that means is that most of the time when people encounter farm animals like rabbits, they're going to be as pets or chickens in cute TikTok videos and stuff like that. Because of this, most of the farm animals that they're exposed to are usually through videos, movies, or even in a pet context, which is very, very different than a working farm context. Now, that's not to say that farm animals are um, not necessarily capable of changing their behavior, but when you have a rabbit, say, as a pet, that is not a typical behavior pattern of most rabbits, let alone wild rabbits. A pet rabbit has been socialized. It's probably been bred to be more friendly. That is a hugely genetic and inheritable factor. So going off of, you know, your limited experience as an urban American with your pet rabbits or what you see in movies, uh, you tend to react pretty violently and sometimes revolts, like, you know, are revolted by what you see in a more agricultural context. And so it's understandable, but I think it's important that we, people who have much more experience with animals in agricultural contexts, kind of dispel some rumors. And the biggest one that I deal with with rabbits, besides the fact that people get freaked out that you eat rabbits, is that it's wrong to keep them on wire. And this is just simply not true. And we can prove this with a little bit of science and a few quick demonstrations that I want to show you today. So the most important thing is with people who are commenting on this, most of the time they don't know what they don't know. And I always get really suspicious when somebody has overconfidence in what they're saying and when they make a statement, especially a moral statement. And I think it's really important for people to educate themselves. So in case you're somebody who is a little bit more open-minded but still has doubts about this, I want to explain the difference between the different types of wire because when we say wire that can mean a lot of things. Are we talking about chicken wire? Are we talking about hardware cloth? What gauge of wire are we talking about? Is it galvanized before or after weld? Is it rusty? So these kind of factors really add up. So it's not one thing. Wire is not one thing. And when a rabbit is housed on the appropriate wire, you're not going to run into any issues. So if it's cheap wire that you get at the store, the wire is going to be thin. You want at least 14 gauge galvanized after weld wire, which is what I'm holding right here. Now as you can see, this is very thick wire. And the other important thing about this is it's smooth, there's no hard edges. I'm putting my hand on this right now and I can tell you this isn't uncomfortable because it's so thick. And again, basic physics here is the smaller the openings, the more... Uh, a surface is going to behave like a flat surface versus a porous surface. So the fact that this is basically the thickest wire you can easily use and is pretty um, heavy duty shows that it is not thin wire that's going to cut into your skin and eat. Now again, if I'm displaying this here, I'm putting, you know, at least 20-25 pounds of pressure here and it is not hurting my hand in any way. Now again, another thing to keep in mind here is this is a small surface area in my hand, number one. Number two, a human does not have any fur on its skin. So even me pushing here, you know, it leaves little marks on my hand if I'm putting a lot of weight on it, but it's not uncomfortable. The thing about a rabbit is the bottom of its feet are covered with thick fur pads. And most rabbits don't weigh more than 10 or 12 pounds. So this wire over the entire surface is distributed over the entire surface area of the rabbit's feet and body especially when it's lying down and that body is covered with fur and again that's only about 12 pounds of pressure so a more accurate demonstration would be to take a, a fluffy glove put that on your hand and then push on this wire now i don't feel anything here i could i could keep this on here for hours and not have any issues whatsoever and that's what it's like for a rabbit so being on a well-made appropriately designed wire floor is not going to cause a rabbit any harm or any discomfort. Now the main reason why we know 
it's obvious that this wire isn't bothering the rabbits is because we can look at the rabbits themselves. Now, they get a little jittery in my videos primarily because they're scared of the camera. They're not socialized and used to that. But you can see right here, my buck, he's curious, he's alert, he's healthy, he's got a perfectly beautiful coat, plenty of weight on him. He's not in any obvious pain or distress. And this is again, something people don't understand is that we as a rabbit breeder, I spend a lot of time with these rabbits. I see them every day. When something is wrong with an animal, you know, it's not that hard to notice as a breeder. You know, I see 30 rabbits every day. And now a scientist or something may say like, oh, you know, they're prey animals and they don't display distress. And that's true in a theoretical, you know, way but the reality on the ground is when you spend a lot of time around animals you begin to pick up their patterns of what's normal what's not normal and it can be very subtle but it's very easy to tell when an animal is distressed and if i put these rabbits on extremely poor crappy wire like that the door is made out of I would notice very quickly a decline in their condition. I would notice a decline in their feed intake, their productivity, their water intake. I'm measuring all these variables every day because it's a highly controlled environment. So I can tell when something is wrong. And it's very obvious <laughs> by the fact that my rabbits are doing perfectly fine. They don't have any major health issues. Behind you right now, there's a bunch of babies playing in their cage. There are no discomfort whatsoever, which again, I proved by using the glove on the wire. Now, one of the common kind of attitudes we see both in comments on YouTube and posts on blogs and in the sort of anti-animal farming movement more broadly is that, you know, we farmers and breeders are sort of these evil people who are just looking to exploit these animals and, you know, we just want to do whatever's easier for money, 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 which is just preposterous, okay? You know, the reality is this is not a profitable endeavor, you know, it's something you do as a hobby. It's something that is taking time away from, you know, things that I could be doing that are a lot easier, you know, playing video games, hanging out with friends, etc. <laughs> you know, it's not something that's going to be this huge, huge profitable enterprise. I'm lucky if I break even half the time. And that goes true with many small scale farms and even the big farm, bigger farms with people actually doing this for a living, you know, nobody's making millions being a farmer. And you put in an incredible amount of time with these animals, an incredible amount of work. You know, we get really depressed. It's really sad when an animal dies. You know, we get up at three o'clock in the morning when an animal has an injury or is uncomfortable or the rain's coming down and something blew off. I mean, that's just for me, That, let alone what full-time farmers do. It's a commitment that you spend a lot of time devoted to your animal's welfare, and it's really ignorant for somebody to come in and say, like, oh, you know, I know more than you because I have a pet rabbits, and this is so cruel, and some animal rights group said that this is bad. It's just totally inaccurate. There would be no benefits to us causing deliberate harm to our animals. Animals that are in pain, animals that are uncomfortable, animals that are distressed, they don't produce as quickly, they don't reproduce as quickly, they don't grow as fast. I mean, there's literally no benefit to a farmer or breeder to have sick, stressed animals. It is in our best interest to have our animals as healthy. Ethics aside, even if we were just talking about profit and productivity, it's in our best interest to have healthy, happy animals because healthy, happy animals grow better and generally function better. And ultimately, you can use your animals as a gauge of are they healthy or not. And one of the other most common things you hear about people talking about wires is it's bad for their feet. It causes sore hocks. And I've talked about this before, but that is completely false. Wire does not cause sore hocks. Genetics causes sore hocks. There are plenty of rabbits from the exact same breed that do great on wire and then others that get sore hocks. The only difference is the genetic variable. How much fur is on the feet, how the animal sits, these are all controlled by genetics. That is in complete control of the breeder. So a poorly bred animal can get sore hocks on wire, but guess what? A poorly bred animal can get sore hocks from being on the ground, from being on wood, from being on pine shavings. An animal prone to sore hocks is an animal prone to sore hocks. Now, is wire a natural surface for meat rabbits? Of course not. But meat rabbits are not wild rabbits, particularly commercial lines that like meat rabbit breeders like myself breed, like Californians, New Zealands, or some of the heritage breeds that were also bred for meat. These animals were specifically created to live in this context. They are not wild rabbits. They've had a huge amount of genetic manipulation over hundreds of years of breeding. So it's true a wild rabbit wouldn't do good on wire, but you know, within three generations, a good breeder can get sore hawks out of his herd and they can thrive on wire. So that's something that most pet people and most people not experienced with meat rabbit breeding in general don't ever think about is the genetic factor there. We adapt the animals to the environment. It's not appropriate to compare them to wild rabbits because they're not wild rabbits, they're human creations. And ultimately, most things that control an animal's welfare after you take care of the basics is genetics. 
Now I'm gonna to wanna to do a video um, more fully where I discuss why I actually think, you know, confined cage raising is more suitable to meat rabbits than most other livestock. For example, I would say it's unethical to keep a chicken in a cage that you would keep a meat rabbit in, but it's not unethical to keep a meat rabbit in there. And we can look at some of their history, both as wild animals and how we bred them, to kind of discuss that, but that's a topic for another video. And of course, there are caveats here. I don't want to speak in absolutes, just like people who, you know, say keeping rabbit on wire is bad, shouldn't speak in absolutes. For certain breeds of meat rabbits, such as the giant breeds that are well over 20 pounds, that's probably pushing it, you know. And there's obviously most of the breeders with those animals are familiar with their needs. And I also think that most rabbits should have resting boards in their cages, which incidentally is another reason why I know wire doesn't bother them because all of my rabbits have plastic resting boards in their cage where they can get off the wire if they wanted to. And more than half of them never even use it at all, which is clearly evidence that the wire is not bothering them. If it was, they'd never step off of it. Um, so yes, I do think you should be using the appropriate wire you know, at least 14 gauge, it should be in good condition, not rusty. The breed should be correct, you know, it shouldn't be a giant breed usually unless they're very much been bred to be on wire. And of course you should be managing your genetics to make sure that the kind of animals you're raising thrive in the kind of environment you have. But the gist of this argument is that it is in no way cruel to keep animals on wire in the appropriate circumstances, specifically rabbits in this context, and it is a much more nuanced issue than people will make it out to be. Part of the reason people have this visceral reaction, like I said, is because they've just become so detached from the on-the-ground realities, and they think that, you know, my one pet rabbits or the movie with the little bunny it is an accurate representation of how these animals think, work, and feel. At the end of the day, they're not humans. They're not even close to humans. So when you anthropomorphize and say, oh man, I would find that really uncomfortable, I want wide open spaces and soft ground, that's incorrect because that's a human perspective, not a rabbit perspective, which I will touch on in that video that I'm going to make up next talking about you know meat rabbits psychology and why it's perfectly fine to keep them the way we do but that's another topic today just take away from the fact that in the right context there's nothing wrong with keeping meat rabbits on wire if you keep meat rabbits on wire you already know this if you're looking to get into meat rabbits this should bolster your uh, confidence in doing so and if you are one of the many people who you know initially feels surprised and uh, upset at seeing rabbits on wire I hope this video has given you some useful information to chew on and at least some useful context to kind of factor in before you form a strong opinion Otherwise, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'm interested to hear your comments down below, whether you agree, disagree, found this useful or not. And if you did find it useful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.